Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Christopher, and this is Health and Fitness The Truth, and in this video, we're gonna go over the front rack squat. Let's get it done. All right, let's get right into the cues for the front squat. I've got this set on a ledge that is just under my shoulder height, which means when I get it and I, and I come up with it, I don't have to hike with my shoulders or come up on my toes in order to get it off the ledge and clear of the ledge and to back out of it. And more importantly, after I've done a bunch of squats and I'm racking it, I won't have to then come up on my toes or, or hike my shoulders. Um, I'll just be able to walk it forward until it runs into the rack and then drop it on, onto its lead. Facing the rack, as always, as, well, I'm facing the rack, as with most barbell lifts. Now there's a lot of ways you can hold the barbell on a front rack squat. The classic front rack position, and if you wanna get better at your Olympic lifts, then you'll wanna work on this. So classic front rack position is with your fingers on the bar, push your elbows forward, the bar is right in the front of your neck, right on your collarbones, but on top of your shoulders. It's important that your elbows stay nice and forward and high. If your elbows are further down, then the weight isn't able to rest on your shoulders. It's generally held in your fingers or hands, which puts a lot of strain on your wrist. But I don't wanna be holding it in my hands. I wanna be resting it on my shoulders. So I need the elbows pushed up high. A lot of people feel like the bar is like literally choking them. And yeah, there'll be a little bit of that feeling. You wanna push it right into that sternal notch right there, okay? So this is the classic front rack position, but there are a few things that stop a lot of people from being able to get here comfortably or at all. Let's start distally and move our way to the core. So tight wrists can be one factor. I'm kinda hypermobile in a lot of areas, so I have like way more than 90 degrees wrist extension, but you don't need that much, and most people don't have that much including most people who go ahead and do the front rack position. It's totally possible that you could have relatively tight wrists and you're still able to get into this, okay? Wrist isn't always the thing. Okay, so wrist can be a problem. Elbows aren't generally a problem. Shoulders, shoulders aren't really a problem. You need to have minimal amount of shoulder strength to just push your arms forward against the minimal amount of resistance that the bar represents when you're just wrapping your fingers around it. The real problem is, is the lats and possibly the upper back. The lat is a muscle that covers, its origin point is all the way down here in the sacral area and it comes all the way up to T7. It covers this entire range and it comes here, okay, and inserts on the outside edge of the bicipital groove, okay? Okay, so it inserts onto the front of the humerus. Imagine a rubber band, or a series of rubber bands, from each of these vertebrae up to the front of the humerus, okay? And they're all coming, they're all coming here, and as soon as this starts to come forward, as we would need it to for a front rack position, okay? As soon as this comes forward, if the, if the lat is super tight, it will cause either the low back to arc unnecessarily because these attachment points being tight as you pull and elongate that, or you won't be able to get your arms all the way overhead. And in really tight lats, it's difficult, it's difficult to get your elbow forward where you would need it for a front rack position, okay? So it could be that. Or it could be that your upper back is relatively immobile and your scapula don't move, maybe you've got scapula like Ozai's here, and they're literally like fused into place, right? He's got screws keeping them there. You might just have adhesed fascia and muscle keeping them in place so they don't move very well. And if the thoracic spine doesn't move very well, then that might be something else that's keeping you from getting your elbows forward and up into that front rack position. So wrists being mobile enough is an issue, shoulders having strength, just dealing with a little bit of discomfort as you push that into the front of your neck can be an issue. And then mobile lats and upper back all could be an issue in being able to successfully get into this position and maintain it. And the darn thing is, if you're gonna maintain that front rack position all the way into the bottom of the squat, every squat has a natural amount of forward lean at the hips. So if I'm here upright, and I'm like, yeah, I can get my elbows all the way there. But as I squat, there's a little bit of forward lean. You can't get away from it. And even though a front rack squat is a more upright squat than your typical back squat, you're gonna have to be able to press those elbows 
up even more at the bottom of your squat than when you were upright without any forward lean. Okay, but let's get through the rest of the cues. So let me give you some options if you're not worried about being able to get into the front squat. The most common option is simply to take your arms straight out and then take hands to opposite shoulders. And you don't have to worry about the same angle through the shoulder. And you don't have to worry about getting your wrists back, okay? But it's still critical that you keep the elbows up high. Because as I go forward, if, if my shoulders, not my shoulders, but if my elbows roll down, then, then I'm gonna lose the front rack position. So wherever you're putting your hands, want my feet, straight forward or slightly wide. I don't want them just wide of my hips. I want my hips directly under my shoulders to begin with. I don't want to be here when I start. Okay, I want my shoulders back and down. And I want good posture just like the beginning of any lift. As I drop my weight, as I drop my hips into this squat, I want, as in any squat, external rotation through my hips. Which means if my feet weren't in contact with the floor, they would go toes wide. But the friction of my shoes or my feet against the floor is gonna keep my toes from going wide, but I'm gonna get that external rotation in the hips. I'm gonna maintain that all the way down. Let's talk about depth. Some people say that if you're not breaking the plane, if you're not breaking 90 degrees in the, in the hips, right, or, or parallel to the floor with your hamstrings, that it's not a full squat. I say that's BS. If you can drop all the way, great, good for you, get it every time but a lot of people can't, and a lot of people's hips stop them from getting that low. A lot of people's dorsiflexion in their ankles stops them from getting that low. A lot of people are 50, 60 plus years old, doing front squats, good for them, and they don't need to be going that low. The reason to go that low is to, is to gain the strength from that depth. But if functionally you're never going to be dropping that low, especially if functionally your body doesn't get into that position anyway, then you don't need to go that low. What I say is get as low as you can with good form and come up from there. And if there's more depth to be had by increasing strength and flexibility in the right areas, you can work on that. But it's not like you shouldn't do squats if you're not gonna put your butt all the way to the ground. From the bottom of the squat, coming back up, it's important that your hips and your chest move at the same time. I don't want to do this, and I don't want to have a bit of a lurch forward. And that, those are two common things, hips back and up first, or, or shoulders forward first, right? But at the same time that my hips are moving, I want to be driving my chest up and back. In the back squat video that I made, we talked about the importance of coming all the way forward with your pelvis. I see a lot of squats end like this. With knees locked and the hips back, you gotta get those hips all the way forward. Don't take your hips in front of your shoulders. It's not great for your back. Just get to proper alignment with your, with your pelvis right under your shoulders and a well-aligned spine. Okay, and then you just, if you put the ledge where it ought to be, you can just walk forward so your barbell hits the rack and then just drop it. There's your front squat. All right guys, let's talk real quick about prime movers for the front squat. They're actually gonna be the same as in a back-loaded squat. Let's just turn Ozai around. And we can start with the glutes. Okay, so glute max has an insertion, has an origin point that comes all along the upper posterior edge of the iliac crest here into the sacral area. And it comes across and inserts along this line quite quite comes down quite low on the insertion point. Let's look at the quads. Okay, quads, as the name implies, has four branches. They all have the same insertion point right down here on this tibial tuberosity right there below the kneecap or patella. But as for its four origin points, you've got rectus femoris, which has this insertion point, but it comes all the way up. It's the only one of the four branches that crosses this joint and it comes right up here, inserts onto the front lower aspect of this iliac crest, okay? Now your vastus lateralis on the lateral side of your femur attaches to the greater trochanter here and some way down the line right under it on the anterior side of your femur, okay? And of course comes down to the tibial tuberosity. Your Vastus medialis inserts or originates rather right in here and down a little bit on the shaft on the medial side. Okay, and it comes down to the same spot on the tibial tuberosity. Okay, and then you've got vastus intermedius, which is deep to the other three, and it just originates on the 
lateral, anterior, or front aspect of the shaft of the femur. And again, of course, down to the same spot. Okay, let's turn Ozai around and look at some of these back muscles. Okay, quadratus lumborum, of course. Just this muscle that goes from the top posterior aspect of your iliac crest straight up to the bottom of the 12th rib, okay? Just closes that space. And then the lower portion of your erector spinae. The portion that crosses the, the joint space between pelvis and spine, okay? Because with that forward hip hinge that you get with any squat, you're putting the quadratus lumborum and the lower section of the erector spinae on stretch as you lean forward. And then as you bring your torso upright and align your pelvis right under your shoulders, you need to use those lower back muscles in order to get your posture where it needs to be. There you go. Thanks, Ozai. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully your front rack squat is a little bit better informed. Don't forget to hit that subscribe if you want to stay educated and up to date on all the barbell lifts and all the resistance training that we'll eventually go over in these videos. We'll see you guys in the next one.